Okay, let's see what we got here. You get this facing the right direction. Alright, this way. We have this plunger and spring. The spring sticks up in the back of this. And it goes right there. We got the check ball is 373 thousandths a little spring and check valve here got quarter inch ball that goes there spring on top orifice plug on top I would not take that out I just took it apart to, because I'm not going to be using this valve body it doesn't matter if I destroy it Got another spring check valve here, and it's spring and check valve here. Okay, there's a 236 thousandths plastic ball that goes there. Our separator plate goes on here. And I think there was just plastic deal holds this in right there. This side of the valve body we got our separator plate. There's two hold downs for that. body goes on top. Here's an eight millimeter. Let's see where was it at. One right here. I think that was the only one. Eight millimeter right there. Okay, let me get the rest of this over here and we'll put it on. Okay, got pressure switch A and B. Rubber O-ring, rubber O-ring. Eight millimeter that holds that on. We have our temp sensor O-ring. There's one of those plastic deals that pushes into here, kind of helps hold it on. That goes all the way through. This one goes all the way through too. That holds the valve body onto the case. Our wiring harness sits on here. have this 13 millimeter bolt holds that onto there Oops. I need to get a picture of that connector with white and green wires be sure and lock all your tabs when you get these on there green with brown and white uh, green and black with brown and 
brown and yellow and gray on our temp sensor. Let's see, blue and green with blue. This one, blue connector with white with red, blue and green. switch we got this one it's not like you can screw that one up and we got blue and orange green and blue and we got Green and orange, and brown. And it just goes to a speed sensor. Um, this goes to the neutral switch, I believe. These bolts stayed in there, they're eight millimeters. Got a rubber seal around here. Okay, that's all for the valve body. I'll see how much other information I can get before they take this unit away. Okay, we've got D-shaped ring here. D-shaped black one here. D-shaped orange one here on the second group. Got steels, clutches, snap ring short end of the taper up. Got our cushion spring. I don't really care if these O-rings get screwed up because it's not being built. They're sending it off as a core. Our piston. Tab, it's got a line up there. When we push this down, we want to push it down just enough to get the snap ring in, short end of the taper up, opening at that tab. Alright, battery died. D shaped on here. shaped here. The inner lip is going to be rounded. Alright, D-shaped on here. I use the foot press to press these in. Presses them in really nice. Rather than trying to fight them, they'll pop right in. And I press that in, our return spring, balance piston. Make sure we don't roll this lip when we put it in. And our snap ring going on top, short end of the taper up again. I want the opening over in here. Okay, and we have bearing goes on top. Hub. 
camera shaft. Snap ring, short end of the taper up. Bearing on top. Alternate clutches and steels. Pressure plate goes with the step up, snap ring, and we got a D shaped ring in there, a D shaped one on here. plate actually goes this way and then our snap ring goes in here we have to put this in the foot press more than likely see if the uh, adaptive case press rings will work on here if not I'll try to put it in by hand all right adaptive case will not work let's see if we can push it in Okay, either going to take two people or I'm going to have to find something to fit on here. And compress this down, so I'm just wasting camera time at this point. I'll, when I get this in, I'll tell you how I did it. Okay, I used a 45RFE 2C steel and it seemed to work pretty well. Still had to work at getting it in there. But it did pretty pretty good job on this piston here i just marked everything the way it was um I've got this tab here so i marked my piston where it was this is a molded piston and this tab here has to line up in here. And then the opening of the snap ring has to be behind this opening cannot be in here apparently and let's see if we can just work it in
Okay, that went pretty easy. I'll get to the next part. Okay, I'm not going to take this all apart, but this little lever down here operates this sprag. When you come down this way, these pop up. Locks the sprag this way. The letters are facing up. You turn it this way, it locks it down. This uh, sits on top. I'm not going to flip it over because there's a little springs in here. And these little things, I don't want to do any more work than I have to. The letters face up on this also. Okay, and then this plate goes this side down. And it only lock or goes in one way apparently. And there we go. The snap ring goes on top. Put the opening away from the openings. This little piston, this cutout has to face right here because that's what hooks onto that lever right here. And a spring. The recess side goes in, o ring. And this snap ring goes on here. It was a little fun getting that snap ring out of there. up inside of here there we go 25 torques on both of these See what else I can get. Okay, cushion plate. Steels. Clutch, steel. Another clutch. Pressure plate, this side up. Snap ring. Short end of the taper up. And if you want to test the sprag, we're working this direction. Let's see, make sure we're turning. Okay, yeah, it's supposed to turn counterclockwise, lock clockwise. 
and you can apply air into this hole. 40 psi. Let's see. Probably going to need a rubber tip. And it's supposed to lock both directions. Okay, we're locked both directions. And now we're free. First, it wanted to stay applied. I guess once, oh, there we go. We've got to move it back just a little bit and it'll release. Okay. Okay, we're on our stator. Same thing, you just stretch your rings out, get them on the groove, get you a bushing around here, or you can just use a hose clamp and uh, compress those back down. There are two feed ports, got to line up right there. And since we don't care, I'm just going to tighten these down with an impact. chance to look up torque specs yet. Our bearing four in the bottom. Move up for our piston. Okay, our piston has a bleed hole. It goes at the 12 o'clock. This tab goes over here. The opening of our snap ring goes in the same spot. Looks like it's beveled on both sides. So you can't screw that up. See how hard this is going to be. This is probably going to end up like the 1640s, where it's going to be a pain. And it's going to want to pop out. So I'm probably going to have to find something. be a super pain.
damn sure that we're in that groove. We have a ply plate. Gotta go around those fingers. Okay, our ply plate. This bearing. Our drum assembly. Bearing on top. Our sun shell. Cushion plate. The two uh, tabs over here. Pressure plate with the step down. This bearing with the feet down. Make sure it's sitting on there right. Okay, yes. Feet down. Our sun shell. Clutches. Fresh or steel. Center support, feed port pointing this direction. Tab's got to sit right there. Our planetary. I guess we're going to have to put the bearing in first. Sun gear does not seem to matter which direction it goes. This bearing goes on the back of this planetary. This bearing goes in here. There's supposed to be a race on that bearing. That's all right. Sprague assembly is going to have to spline in to our planet. This is going to sit over here. Feed port's going to be pointing that direction.
snap ring goes at three o'clock position bevel facing up building this I think I would put it a little bit further up this edge at least right at the edge of that all right our shell get that all the way back down. There we go. Alright, this bearing. And it's easy to get the park assembly out of this as you can get to the roll pin and drive it out whereas you can't do that on the others. You have an o-ring here. I don't see any specific lineup for it unless it's not got uh, concentric bolt holes but looks like it does looks like it pops around the filter Probably should put a little bit more lube on that. Alright, three eight millimeters. Hold that in. Looks like the bushing is real similar to the 6T40 and the 6F35. Looks like you could probably use that superior bushing there. It's got the same orifice. Alright, we've got seals over here. Park actuator. We might ought to put our linkage in. This hooks around the linkage there and hooks into the case right there.
rubber seal. Two eight millimeters. All right, blue link over our chain up. And our sprockets. bearing flat side down plastic washer goes up make sure it pops into place it's got these little feet that go into there and our sun gear for our diff bearing sits on top and different sits on top of that okay I'm gonna put my linkage in oh forgot this piece gotta get that in there maybe the wrong seal Try this seal. Okay. Our pork. I think I'm going to try to wait. So maybe I can show you me putting it in. Okay, on the pump, this pin was a two thousandths longer than this pin. So I know on another tranny it made a difference. The dot on this is supposed to be facing up at the four o'clock. The dot on the rotor is supposed to be facing up. The slot right here. supposed to be pointing over here the tab is supposed to be pointing over here and then our gasket is on top Okay, there's a check ball. Um, Three hundred seventy-three thousandths goes in there in the spring. Then this uh, pin, and this is pinned over so that it can't come out. I forgot to get the measurements on this spring, so I'll do that afterwards. Um, your washer here, seal, sealing ring here. She's a hose clamp to size that down again. Seal on your pump shaft here. There's a snap ring, I'm sure, just like on the 6T40s, on the Gen 3s. Uh, if it's anything like that one, it's a real pain to get out. There's no need to take this shaft out. Just pop your seal out and pop the new one in. This is how your pump goes.
30 Torx on these bolts. They feel like they are torqued to yield, so they're probably, I would bet you, are recommended to be replaced every time. Since we don't care, we're just going to tighten these down. Okay, there's a dark side and a lighter side. The dark side was up. And this one was upside down. There's a line right here, the line goes up. I don't think there's a mark on this chain, so I don't think it matters. be difficult today. There we go. Alright, we got the short end of the taper of our snap ring is going to be up. Our snap ring pliers. cover that goes on here. And of course, it's not going to let me do it one-handed. There we go. got our seal here, we got our front seal on the front, this washer goes here, axle seal, our pump is going to go on, I'm going to bet I'm going to probably need to set this up so that my gear doesn't fall off. We got these 30 torques go out here. These 30 torques go on the stator. Eight millimeters on this oil trough.
Okay. Now, seal for our stator also. Make sure this bushing down inside here is in good shape because that's what seals up for the torque converter. All right, I'm going to get this ball and spring and pin back in here. I'm going to put the case half on. And 13 millimeters for the case. Uh, once I get the case on, I'm going to change camera angle so we can do the valve body. All right, I believe I forgot to mention it. There is a filter seal that goes in here. And, of course, put your filter on. Mario, can you bring me the key to the Pro Master, please? Before you put this down in there. And this little tab right here has to sit right on that flat spot right there. It didn't come out, so I wasn't going to force it to come out. Okay, the stud locations are here, here, here. Here and here. The rest of them are just the normal bolts and 18 foot-pounds. And since we don't care, oh, don't forget to put sealant between the two case halves. I just use this very thin bead of it. Since I don't care, I'm just going to tighten this down. to change camera angles now so we'll be back all right we got our speed sensor it's gonna go right here eight millimeter on that Now's the time to change your lever seal. We're going to put our linkage in. It's going to go like so. Our pin's going to come in. We've got a roll pin that's going to go through here. And then our detent's going to bolt in right here. When we get our detent in there, the neutral switch is going to have to line up on that right there so it is held in place once i get all that in place i'll turn the tranny back around you have this baffle o-ring eight millimeter Okay, neutral switch on there, 
baffle, four seals here, 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 and here. Okay, I'm not going to put the valve body on here because it's brand new and they want to keep it. You have shorter bolts and you got the longer bolts. Got our valve body that's going to sit on here. Our speed sensor. Our neutral switch you got to plug into here. This connector is bolting into here with two eight millimeters. Our speed sensor has got to hook into here. Of course the long bolts are going to go in all the taller spots. Shorter bolts are going to go everywhere else. Uh, there is an eight millimeter it's supposed to go on the back back here. rubber gasket on the pan speed sensor on the back of the back case here eight millimeter that holds that in sensor bolt and our pan bolts okay that is about it for this unit Luckily I was able to get this done before they come to pick it up, so I got a ton of information out of it. Uh, if I can get a chance, I'm going to to get the uh, start-stop accumulator and see if I can get inf some info on it. I don't know if I will be able to or not though. So if I can, it'll be on the Patreon side. If I can't, it won't. And 13 millimeters on this. I'm sure there's a bolt tightening sequence. I would just start in the center, crisscross, work my way. Okay, we'll see you on the next 